Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the fact that my glasses are steamed up and I've been talking for less than two seconds. Let's try that again. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about gothic fiction for beginners and modern gothic recommendations. I can say recommendations. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Stop laughing. Hello and what are... Uh, yeah, they've gone again. They've gone again. I can't see anything. You know when you want to like clean your glasses but your t-shirt is not the right material to do that? I'll use my shorts. Better. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about gothic fiction for beginners and gothic fiction modern recommendations for you for gothober. We got there in the end. Gothic fiction is obviously hella old. There are so many books that you can read and that can be really intimidating. Now I have made a gothic fiction periodic table which will be going in the activity book for Gothoba so that you can literally tick off which books you have and haven't read of the genre. But if you want to know what kind of modern gothic fiction books I recommend or you want to know where to start with gothic fiction and you'd like to read a classic gothic book for Gothoba, that's what this video is hopefully going to cover. I was thinking about where I started on my gothic fiction journey and obviously for me it started at school but I didn't necessarily appreciate that it was a gothic thing that I enjoyed and then when I went to university I then went and studied gothic fiction and realised that a lot of the classics that I enjoy are gothic fiction or have gothic tropes. So when I studied Jekyll and Hyde that was a great book to kind of start with. It's an intermediate level. So long as you don't mind a mystery and you don't mind being toyed with, like it's a great place to start. So that is where I would recommend you start for your gothic fiction journey. Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is a Victorian set novel by Robert Louis Stevenson, so the same guy that brought you Treasure Island, and essentially it is about a man trying to investigate his friend. It actually follows a man called Utterson who is investigating some strange circumstances that he thinks his friend is in and he's worried about his friend. And it follows this murder mystery where his friend's behaviour becomes more and more strange and he seems to be beholden by this, to this man called Mr Hyde and he has to work out what is going on. Now obviously Jekyll and Hyde has been used as a reference countless times since then so you could probably guess how that works but it's really really interesting to kind of see it fall through this story. If you're looking for a real beginner's guide I would recommend this. It is obviously an intermediate level as long as you understand how to read classics or books where you need um, intense comprehension then they, like you'll be fine with this one. Like It's quite a, a basic one and as a starter guide I would not recommend reading Mysteries of Udolfo and Castle of Otranto where they are so heavy. The language in this isn't as difficult as others and I'm not saying that because I'm, I'm patronised. I'm not trying to patronise you. I'm not trying to say that you're too stupid for classics. I know that classics can be intimidating for people who would like to read for enjoyment because they don't want to have to analyse every line. With this you can just enjoy it as a book, is essentially what I'm trying to say. Now if you're looking for a modern adaptation for this book October, read any of the Hulk Marvel graphic novels because, um, I can't remember his name now. Okay Google, who is the Doctor in Hulk? The Hulk is a fictional superhero appearing in publications by the American publisher Marvel Comics. Yeah, that's the one. But what's what's his human name? Bruce Banner, of course it is. So essentially, the Bruce Banner Hulk narrative follows this very, very closely, except that it's modernised and you have the army involved and you have all kinds of, you know, gamma radiation, etc. But essentially, it's a very, very similar story. So if you want a modern adaptation for a Gothoba, I would recommend any of those. Um, I tend to read omnibuses and I really enjoy the comics <laughs> so any of those will work. I'm not going to tell you which one to start with because there are so many split off narratives. This is a great book to read. So the next book that I kind of read off my own back, gothic fiction wise, was Dracula. And now this is a story about a man who travels to Romania and meets this very strange count who wants to buy property in England and he helps him buy the property in England but then some strange happenings happen and again it's a murder mystery. There are elements of it that the author is actively trying to confuse you. But obviously the reason everyone else knows about Dracula is because he is the original vampire. So if you're looking for a modern adaptation of this I would recommend any kind of vampire story any vampire story I guess. But the one that I would definitely definitely recommend is an interview with a vampire. Again you have 
you have the thriller aspects that you will find in Dracula as opposed to some other vampire stories where it is very much just my boyfriend's a vampire and you know which books I'm referencing it is coming up again later but it's so yeah essentially if you're looking for your undead characters if you're looking for red on the front cover or if you're looking for your modern adaptation I would definitely recommend an interview with a vampire by Anne Rice for Dracula because you've got your vampires um, but again it's entry level gothic fiction it's not going to be so intense that you just hate it although I would say with Dracula that the first 11 chapters are about what Jonathan Harker is eating it's just his menu he travels different places and he eats different things feel free to skip the first 11 chapters the next is Northanger Abbey. Now, technically, this is a parody of gothic fiction, but it came out around the same time as gothic fiction. If you're looking for a gothic fiction for beginners, taking the mick out of it is a really great way to see all those tropes, but have them like explained to you in like a funny comedic way. This follows Catherine Morland, who is a young heroine who reads a lot of gothic novels and assumes that every everyone is living their gothic lives. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> and essentially, she gets this chance to visit Northanger Abbey and she is desperately in love with the son of the man who owns Northanger Abbey but it all doesn't go to plan, things go horribly wrong, miscommunication, she assumes someone's a murderer when they might not be, she's not sure, um, and loads of crazy happenstances happen because she spends too much time with her head in a book. But this is Jane Austen essentially saying like you can enjoy a book but don't assume that the fiction is real, like supernatural is not real and stuff like that. So it's, it's a fun one. Um, Val McDermott has done a murder mystery based on this. I I've not read it, but again, if you if you want a modern adaptation of it, you have that opportunity, but this is more for, as your entry into gothic fiction, you might something that's a bit more lighthearted. If you're a romance reader, for example, and you, you don't like the thrillers and the horrors and things like that, that seem to be the entry level into gothic fiction or goth in general, Northanger Abbey is the romantic element of that. So again, it plays on those tropes, but it doesn't, no one dies. No one's, no, there's no jump scares. It's a lovely story because it's Jane Austen, so. And you've got her biting wit the entire way through as well because she does mock her own characters and I love that. I love that for her. So anyway, yeah, if you need something that's gothic-y but not scary, this would be my recommendation. Right, let's talk about Wuthering Heights. Wuthering Heights is not my favourite, but it's another romantic gothic novel. So this is about a man who called, well it's not really about the man, but this man sets it off. Essentially Mr Lockwood sets it off when he invites a young beggar child to come and live with him in his house. He raises this little boy alongside his two children, Kathy and Edward, and I don't know if Edward is his child or if he's like the love triangle. I'm really struggling to like recap what this book is for you because it's been so long since I read it because as much as I really appreciate the Brontes, they're not my faves. But again, on the back of Northanger Abbey, I felt like you might want another romance. Now this is the original love triangle between the Lockwoods and Heathcliff, who is the original brooding Byronic hero. He's an awful human being, and yet everyone falls in love with him. The original bad boy, and it's the love triangle with, between him, Kathy, and a third person who I believe is called Edward, but I'm really pulling that out of nowhere. It's sad, it's moody, it's set on the moors, and um, it's also the basis of Twilight. Except Twilight has vampires in it as well, because why not? I don't know if you know this, but when you read Twilight, she talks about Wuthering Heights a lot in both the first and second book. I think it becomes Romeo and Juliet in the third, though. I can't remember. But yeah, essentially, if you need to know where this came from, it's Wuthering Heights. And that's why I decided to have this as a modern adaptation of Wuthering Heights and not Dracula, because Bram Stoker would not have allowed his vampires to sparkle. But Emily Bronte might have. I reckon she could get behind some glitter, but anyway. And the final one technically isn't a gothic fiction, so obviously this is a Shakespeare play. Macbeth is about a young ambitious lord who kills his king to become king and all of the horrible things that happen to him after that. It has very, very dark, very gothic-y tropes. It has the supernatural, the castles, the battles, all these things that make up gothic fiction, but obviously two, three hundred years before that. And Yo Nesbo has written a modern adaptation as a murder mystery. Now Yo Nesbo is known for being dark and mysterious and gory and visceral and terrifying and I have started this one as an audiobook and I am hoping to finish it 
um, either during Gothtober or beforehand. So I, I'm not recommending this, but I'm saying again, if you would like a modern adaptation and what I've described to you already doesn't pique your interest, this might be for you. This is horrible. But if you're into horrible, then I guess it's gonna suit you just fine. Dante's Inferno, much like with Shakespeare, is obviously not a gothic fiction novel, but it is something that inspired a lot of gothic fiction. <laughs> but it is something that inspired a lot of gothic fiction novels. So this is obviously a long poem. I can't remember if it's called an epic or there's a different name for it. I'm gonna call it an epic. Um, this is an epic poem written by Dante, where the main character is led through the several layers of hell. Um, and experiences true trauma with how horrible hell is and then comes out the other side having learnt all about hell and it was a political satire of the time because Dante was actually kicked out of his hometown for having political beliefs that did not gel with everyone else's and or did not work alongside everyone else's so he wrote this so it kind of been like um, you know that episode of Black Mirror where the Prime Minister has sex with a pig and everyone's like that's obviously David Cameron without it actually naming David Cameron? But there are two books that I studied that actually if you're interested in gothic fiction may be of use to you because they are modern adaptations but also again they're kind of split theme wise and genre wise. So the first is Dante's Club, this is a murder mystery based around Dante's Inferno so someone is killing people related to each layer of hell um, but it's also dark academia. So this is set at Harvard University and essentially a professor has to help stop other people being murdered because elite scholars are being taken to different versions of hell by a mur mass murderer. That's obviously super, super dark. Dark academia, but at its darkest and murder mystery. -y. And you've also got Jodie Picoult's Tenth Circle. Jodie Picoult is known for writing truly sad and depressing stories. And this is no different. A man who lost his wife, he's a graphic artist. So he illustrates a graphic novel that is all about Dante's Inferno and hell. And he then goes through his own personal hell, trying to re like reunite himself with his daughter, especially when he finds out that something truly, truly horrible has happened to her. Trigger warnings, there is uh, rape in this, there is abduction in this, it is super super dark. Um, obviously trigger warnings for all kinds of horrible things in this but I just think when it comes to sexual assault I need to give you guys a heads up, this is dark. So, but in a more um, women's lit kind of way, if that makes any sense. I could just be saying phrases that mean nothing to you, but anyway. Those are both modern adaptations for Dante's Inferno if you're looking for something really really dark. I have four more gothic fiction novels that may help you if you're looking for an intro into gothic fiction but I've not convinced you to go in with the classics or the modern adaptations, these are just modern classics. So we'll start with the super super obvious one, Ninth House. Now I've mentioned this several times before, I've mentioned this when I was talking about my gothic fiction collection in particular. This is Dark Academia, Murder Mystery, it's new adult. Um, it's Lee Bardugo, who I know a lot of people like, and the writing style of this is really straightforward, really, really simple, but really detailed. It gives you the opportunity to work out the murder and gives you all the gothic -y things that you need. Um, it is beautifully written and really well crafted, and if you enjoy a good murder mystery um, and you want more of a gothic feel, then this would definitely be my recommendation. This is also Tish from Little Wolves, one of her favourite books of the year, so give it a try. If you're not sure about gothics and certainly modern retellings, this airs on the side of fantasy and supernatural than it does straight gothic, but obviously it has a lot of those gothic-y tropes, which I think you'll enjoy. The same can be said for Saw Kill Girls, so this is about three girls who live on an island trying to survive whilst a monster tries to eat them. Again, lots of gothic-y tropes, lots of really fun stuff like that, but this is incredibly sapphic, you've got um, some romance in there, the supernatural, the psychological, the murder mystery style of it. it. I wouldn't class it as dark academia, there are some stuff in it where they do some research but it doesn't really it doesn't really stretch to that unfortunately. But this would tick off your modern gothic as well as um, your LGBTQ representation. But it's a really fun read. It is dark, it has some really really dark moments and again trigger warnings for a soul but um, it's a really compelling read. I really enjoyed this one, so I keep telling everyone about it. The one that I actually haven't finished reading, but again, modern gothic, dark academia, occultish themes, all great stuff. I wouldn't describe this as a red cover, this is like pinky purple, but maybe you have a red cover of it, I don't know. Anyway, this is The Furies by Katie Lowe. I am loving this. I originally had this as my prompt for my dark academia for Gothtober, but then it came up in Bacopoli, which is why I'm now reading it early. And actually it's great because it means that I can recommend it to you guys. I love this. This is like if the TV series Skins 
had dark occult themes in it um, about a bunch of girls who are doing horrible things to other people using magic um, whilst the main character is dealing with her own trauma and just trying to make friends. Really, really dark, really, really spooky, really, really gothic. So again, this is written in plain English, contemporary modern. And if you, so if you're looking for like a, a way in and you want a modern gothic, I would definitely recommend this one. This is, I've only got about 100 pages left. I'm excited. I'm so excited. But yeah, that one. And then if none of those tickle your fancy or if you're like, okay, I don't really read adult or YA, um, I would recommend Coraline, which is a middle grade. But again, it has all those gothic -y tropes. You have a female protagonist. You have a spooky supernatural underworld. You have psychological trauma. You have all kinds of stuff. You have neglect from her parents and the, the, the need for attention. All these different things that are very, very gothic -y, but for a younger audience. So again, if you need an easier gateway, this is such a spectrum. Like with gothic fiction, it is such a spectrum. Finding something in that niche can seem really intimidating because you have so many options so this is a case of like if you're really really not sure but you know you like terry pratchett style writing or neil gaiman style writing Coraline is a great way in because it is gothic but it's a modern gothic and it has that kind of fun exuberant cats talking to you rat circus craziness but light-hearted and it's neil gaiman so you, you can rest assured in his like in his hands if you like his style of writing this is just gonna yeah it would just be great for you so those are the recommendations i have for both modern gothic and your gateway into beginning your love for gothic fiction i know a lot of people that are on the twitter are already fans of gothic fiction so let me know if you feel like there should have been a book in this list whether a classic or a modern gothic that you would recommend to people who are just starting their gothic fiction journey and other than that i hope you have a nice day